Hey guys, uh, welcome to Sunday School um, Online. What is it like? The week week seventy five, right? It's what it feels like. Uh, it's been a while, and I really do want to see you guys again. Uh, but for 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 now, uh, let's just do the best that we can with the situation that we're in. And um, I have a couple of announcements for you, uh, so make sure you stick around until the very end because that's where I put them. Um, I might have to mix them in, like, you know, in the middle sometime, uh, just so that I can make sure that you guys are watching. But make sure you stick around for those announcements at the end. And um, and I want you guys to make sure that you have your uh, a Bible and a pen and paper or pencil and paper or something to write with um, in hand as we go through these lessons. Because I promise you, if you don't write them down, you're going to forget. It. All right. Because that's the same for me. It's the same for everyone who's ever lived. All right, guys. Before we get started for the lesson today... I want to start with a fun little activity, all right? So we're going to start with a what we call an attitude meter, all right? So you're going to measure the level of attitude that you give um, to those people around you. Uh, but on a scale of one to five, what is your attitude to those people? So one being terrible and five being amazing, all right? So ready? Uh, number one is siblings. All right? Number two is parents. Number three is teachers. Number four is your friends. Number five. Is the cashiers at the place that you shop, so uh, people that work, I guess, um, and uh, fast food workers and servers, um, the, the popular crowd, the unpopular crowd, and the custodians and lunch ladies at your school. So um, amongst this list, amongst this list right here, all right, uh, rate them all on a scale of one to five, one being terrible, five being amazing. All right, I'll give you a few minutes to do it. All right, so now that you're done with that activity, hopefully, uh, we're going to jump right into the lesson, all right? Uh, turn to Colossians chapter 3, and that's where we're going to be. But let me give you a little bit of an idea uh, of what we're going to talk about, all right? And so um, we can't narrow down uh, God's attributes into just one single component, right? Like, we can't take the infinite, uh, the infinite and almighty God, right, the creator of the universe, <clears throat> and just say that he is this and call it a day, right? Uh, but one of the qualities that, that is so important to him that he wants his followers to, to share um, is, is love. All of the stuff that he did throughout the Bible for his people, for, for us, um, was, was based around love. And so it's, it's no wonder that God would want us to share that uh, attribute with him as well. And so, not only are we to, to love God, um, but we are also called in the book of Luke, uh, Jesus says to, to first love the Lord God, um, right, with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. And then the second part is to love your neighbor as yourself. So that love isn't just one that's directed to God, it's, it's a love that's also directed to other people. So when you become a follower of Jesus, um, your entire life changes. It's, it's not just the, the finish line that's changed. We're not not only saved from eternity in hell, uh, but we're given a new heart, we're given a new mind, we're given uh, a new life through the Holy Spirit. And so, whoever you were before Jesus it is no longer who you are now. And so all the things that tied you down, all those things that, that hurt you, all those things um, that, that struggle, that, that cause a struggle with you, um, are no more. And not to say those things don't exist, because those troubles will still be there, uh, but they're not what defines you. And so all these things have changed, and so your lifestyle should not look like it was before Jesus. And, and Paul writes in 2 Corinthians that we are a new creation, right? The old is gone, and, and behold, the new has come. And so in today's passage, Paul writes about the old self and the new self. And so what that old self is, is us without Jesus Christ. And that new self is us with Jesus Christ. And so the characteristics of the old self should not be what's, what's noticeable, what's obvious in a person that has Jesus in their lives. But rather, it should be all these things um, that are marked by the new self. And so if you would turn with me, we're going to read our chapter, or read our passage today in, in Colossians chapter 3, uh, verses 8 through 10, um, and then from 12 to 14, all right? So make sure you have your Bible out, uh, 8 through 10, and 12 through 14, all right? And so here's how it goes. But now you must put 
them all away, anger, wrath, malice, and slander, and obscene talk from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old self with its practices, and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. Right, here's verse 12. Put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you. So you also must forgive. And above all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And so it's really helpful to think of um, this passage. Uh, visualize in your mind um, that we are taking off these old clothes, that these wrinkled, dirty, tattered clothes, and we're throwing them away. Uh, like if we're going to a, a special occasion, right? Like a wedding or something that's a celebration where we have to look nice. We don't want to keep those wrinkly, dirty, tattered old clothes on. Um, but rather we want to put on the new clothes, right? So these old clothes, these old characteristics that, that we must put away, Paul mentions are anger, wrath, malice, slander, obscene talk, and lying, right? And so all these things have to be put away and we must put on the new clothes, right? So we have to picture ourselves putting on a fresh set of new clothes. There's no wrinkles, no spots, and you're ready to go to that super important event or meeting. Um, this is like the new self that we're supposed to put on. And so Paul mentions uh, later on in that passage about the, the qualities that we're supposed to have as a new person. We talked about the old qualities, the anger and the malice and stuff, um, but the new qualities that we're supposed to have are the compassionate hearts, the kindness, the humility, the, the meekness, patience, forgiveness, and love. Right? But above all these things, right? he even emphasizes it at the very end of that passage where he says, of all of these things, the most important is love. And so your first discussion question um, that I want to give to you is, why is love above all else? What is so important uh, about love? And if we look back in verse 10, um, Paul tells us that we must be renewed continually in the, in the knowledge, right? of Jesus Christ. And so uh, he created a new life for us by dying on that cross as a payment for our sins uh, and rising from the grave, defeating death, defeating sin on our behalf. Right? And so the characteristics that we're supposed to renew, that we're supposed to create, that are supposed to be uh, born in us are the characteristics of Jesus Christ. And so uh, every day, bit by bit, we should continue to look a little bit more like Jesus. We should continue to, to act a little bit more like Jesus, to show those qualities that Jesus um, showed us. And one of those things is to put love above everything else, right? And so Jesus showed us the perfect love, um, and he even mentions it in, in the gospel, right? He says, uh, there's no greater love than this, that a, that a man should lay down his life for another, right? And, and so he showed us what perfect love looked like when he died on that cross for our sins. All right, our next passage is in John chapter 13, right? And um, we, we showed this kind of love. We're supposed to love, uh, we're supposed to put on love because that is one of the qualities of Christ. But just as importantly, um, we love because that's what Christ has commanded us to do. Uh, he has told us to love one another. And so, uh, John chapter 13, verses 34 through 35. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you are also to love uh, one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. And so when we love one another, there is no debate about it, right? There's no, like, uh, there's no argument about how much we should show, we should love that person, how much we should be willing to go um, the extra mile for that person, how much we express that love for that person, because Christ has called us to just love them like he loved us. 
And so there's no room for debate. There's no argument to be had. We love, we love each other like Christ loves us. And sometimes that might not be the easiest thing to say. Um, but, the, but the main important aspect of that love that Jesus demonstrated for us was how he laid down his life for his disciples. Right? He displays a perfect love by the willingness to lay down his life, to give up his own life, and facing God's wrath for our sins, um, and so that we can be made right with him. Right? Jesus commands us to show love for others to, uh, to be willing, uh, by being willing to lay down our lives um, for them. And so before we get carried away and um, radical, uh, what I'm trying to say is not that you're supposed to die for somebody else, right? Because, I mean, that is that is a noble sacrifice. That is a display of perfect love. But that's not the only thing that Jesus called us to do. What he's telling us is that we need to be able to leave our comfort zones. We need to be able to sacrifice um, some of our wants uh, so that we can help others with some of their needs. And so we sacrifice our selfish desires for the benefit of others. And this is the type of life that we lay down before others. And so this is exactly how the, the world is going to know that we are the disciples of Jesus. Not because we're going out and uh, singing songs about him. Not because we go to church and people see us driving there or, or pulling in with our families to the, to the lot. But we, we are demonstrating God's love when we love each other and we love the world around us. And so the world is going to know that we are Christians, that we are the true disciples, the true followers of Christ, not uh, based around what we say, but rather by what we do and how we love. And so this is discussion question number two right here. Uh, but how does loving one another in the way that Christ uh, loved us show people that we are his disciples? So how does the fact that we love someone um, and display that love show the people around us that we are Christ's disciples. So to wrap it up, I want you guys to go back to that list you made hopefully. If not, pause the video, go back, do that checklist, and come back to this point, alright? But uh, get that list out and we're gonna talk a little bit about that list. And the key point here is your attitude towards somebody is going to define how you treat them. And so if you, if that person's attitude towards you isn't the best, like if someone's super mean to you at school, if someone's super rude to you uh, when you're in line, like if a cashier is like being really mean, right? Or if a fast food worker gets your order wrong, um, and that happens quite a bit, but that, that shouldn't dictate how we treat them, but it does. Because Jesus has called us to love people um, in the way that he loved us. And a lot of times we forget that the way that we treated him was that we were the ones um, that hung him from that cross. We were the ones that beat him. We were the ones that gave him that crown of thorns. And you might be thinking, uh, but John, I wasn't alive a, a 2,000 years ago to do that to Jesus. Um, but the, the fact is that he endured those things because of us. Not, for, not just for us, but because of us. And so, in the way that Jesus demonstrated that love for us, to those people that hated him, to those people that mocked him, um, we are called to do the exact same thing. We're called to go out and be that Christian, be that Christ follower, and demonstrate that love to those people that are mean to us, that hate us, that mock us, that scorn us. Um, and, and that's because that's what Christ did. And so our, and so our third and final uh, discussion question is, how does your attitude demonstrate Christ's love to the world? And so those three things I want you to talk about with your classes, um, make sure you make sure you write them down and think about them, all right? Right now, it might be a little tough um, to, to reach all these people, but I want you to think about, uh, throughout the week, one way that you can demonstrate Christ's love to each of those people on that list. 
and there's not that many, right? Um, and if you don't have a sibling, that's fine. Just skip over it, all right? So one last thing I want to leave you with um, is that as, this, uh, as disciples of Jesus, um, we're called to live lives defined by love, right? Like if someone had to write a, a biography or a memoir about you, um, the, the only attribute, the first attribute that would come to mind should be love, should be how much you love the people around you, how much love that you show to the world, how much love you show to those uh, people closest to you. And people will be drawn to Jesus um, when we show them genuine Christ-centered love. And so all these things that we do, all these things that we um, live our lives and, and go through, we have to remember is for one purpose and only one purpose. And that's to glorify God. I, I want you guys to keep in mind, especially in this tough time, um, what can you do? What difference can you make with your love? Alright guys, it's, it is announcement time. I have a couple of things that I need to let you know of, um, but let's jump right into it. I don't want to start with bad news first, and so let's jump right into good news first. All right, We're going to start and end with good news. All right? It's going to be a little good news sandwich with a little bit of, uh, of that bad stuff inside, but hopefully we don't notice it. All right? um, the first thing is I heard the parade went great, so if you guys uh, came and you showed you know, Christ's love like we were supposed to uh, by these small actions. Super proud of you. If not, I promise you there will be other ways that we could serve the community around us. Um, so let's let's make sure that we stay focused and motivated for that. All right now, a little bit of bad news for you guys. Super Summer has been canceled, all right? And so there will be no week-long uh, retreat at OBU this year. Uh, but I promise you guys, if, if you want to be a leader in Christ, um, we will definitely have some stuff set up for that, uh, starting with um, if, if that leadership position is something that you feel like God's calling you to, or if you want to be a leader um, in the youth, in your schools, in your families, um, and in your friends, uh, they are going to be doing a, uh, a couple of a five week or a four week, I believe, of Super Sunday. And so what we're going to do is we're going to meet together on Sunday evening uh, at 6 p.m., and we're going to watch those videos and we're going to we're going to just break them down and talk a little bit more about that and we're going to have some worship and it's just going to be an awesome time all right so i want to make sure that you guys um, know about that uh, the second thing is false creek is still week six for us however it has been cut to three well technically four days and three nights all right uh, but i promise you what god can do in five days he could do just as much in three or four all right and so those dates are going to be from July 8th through the 11th, all right? So July 8th, we're going to leave on Wednesday, and then we're going to come back on a Saturday. And so make sure you have those dates marked down. Um, it is going to be $80 a person this time, all right? So um, obviously, I, we don't want to pay the exact same thing if we're only going there for half the time, right? Uh, well, three-fifths of the time. And so make sure um, that if you haven't gotten a, a form yet, uh, reach out to me. I did try to mail them out. Um, so shout out to our our secretary Elizabeth for helping me out with that. Um, and if you have gotten have you, if you have not gotten it within the end of the week, uh, please shoot me a text so I can make sure I get it to you somehow. Um, there are still a couple that I needed to get addresses for, so they might be coming in this week. All right. Um, and if you invite a friend, uh, we'll still do that five dollars thing. So uh, the more people you invite. Um, you know, the less expensive it will be for you to go to Falls Creek. And so uh, $80, right, July 8th through the 11th. And um, let me know if you have any questions, all right? And uh, the last bit of good news to go out on, all right, uh, make sure you stick around for that 1045 service because it's going to be awesome, all right? Um, I think that's it. I want to make sure uh, I got everything. I believe that's it um, and guys listen this is a tough time for all of us uh, and so if you if you need any prayers if you need any help if you need anything uh, please reach out to me please reach out to your other leaders uh, because we are there for you guys all right 
Um, love you guys, and uh, let me pray with you, and we'll wrap it up for the day, all right? God, we just thank you again that you continue to just mold these uh, students in your image. And, and even in this turbulent time, even in this difficult time, I pray that you are continually uh, walking with them, that, that you can show them that you are able uh, even when the entire world is not. And you show them through these struggles, that you show them through these hardships um, and how you can get us through them and just glorify you in doing so, Lord. Uh, I pray that you answer any un, uh, unsaid prayer requests that they may have. Uh, if there's any troubles at home, if there's any troubles in their friends, troubles in their lives um, that they can or can't share, I pray that you are with them, that you heal them, that you comfort them, and that you safely guide them through it, Lord. Uh, I thank you again for all these things, and in your name we pray. Amen. Thank you, guys.